lesson number 24, Between a Rock and a Hard Place, God Delivers Israel at the Red Sea. I just want to remind you again, you can download notes for this lesson and all my lessons at my new website, Major Jolt Media, and that's also where you'll find my other video series, Firm Foundation Bite Size. It's the same messages, same teaching, only shorter, 5 to 12 minutes in length. Also, my devotional podcast, Where Is God When Life Sucks, can be found there. That's a twice-weekly devotional. And you'll also find my blog, The Brainwash Pilgrim, and tons of articles, important prayers that you can download and pray, links to other videos, and so much more. It's at majorjolt.us. That's all the address you need. Just type in majorjolt.us. It's a roadmap for your soul. Well, we begin with A, introduction. God presents miracles as part of history, the history of his dealings with the world and its people. And through the record of his miracles, God shows us truths about himself. We come to B, God led the Israelites by a cloud. And the theme here is that God is faithful. He never changes. God delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and began to lead them back to the land that he had promised to their forefather, Abraham. Let's read in Exodus 13, verse 17. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea, and the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. And then in Exodus 13, verse 21, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Well, by this time, the number of Israelites had grown tremendously. When the Israelites first went to Egypt, there were only 70 of them, Jacob's family. And now, 430 years later, there were probably two and a half million Israelites. And God directed them where he wanted them to go by a cloud. He kept the cloud before them at all times. They would have gotten lost. Eventually, they would have died in the desert if God had not been directing them. Well, the most direct escape route would have been the northern route along the Mediterranean coast of Sinai. It finds Mount Sinai in the northern part of the Sinai Peninsula. However, this route was heavily fortified by the Egyptians. It was while they were at Etham, on the western side of the sea, that God told Moses in Exodus 14:2, Speaking to the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before pi Harath, between Migdal and the sea over against baal Zephon. Before it shall you encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Well, in order for them to be entangled in the land, they would have to be traveling through an area of wadis, which is canyons with high mountains all around, which would seem to hem them in. Apparently, God forced them to change their direction of travel from going the northern route to going south through an endless maze of mountainous terrain that boxed them in. And this takes place prior to their crossing of the Red Sea. Biblical archaeologist Ron Wyatt, he searched and he found a beach of tremendous size on the Gulf of Aqaba, which was large enough to hold perhaps two or three million people as well as their flocks. He found a beach of tremendous size on the Gulf of Aqaba at Nueva, and the only passage through it was an 18-mile long wadi system of canyons. You can see the color photo of the beach here. And on the map, I placed a red arrow pointing to the place where the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. And here's the thing. God wanted them to know that he was their deliverer. So that's why he led them into what seemed like a trap. They were hemmed in to the left and to the right. They could only travel in one direction. The only path was through this 18-mile stretch of canyon to a tremendous beach there at Nueva. Well, let's take a look at how this was depicted in the animated film, The Prince of Egypt.
C. Pharaoh decided to recapture Israel. And the theme here is Satan fights against God and his will. Satan is a liar and a deceiver and he hates man. Pharaoh was guided by Satan. He was not about to stop or give up and let the Israelites go. He planned to go after them and recapture them. Exodus 14, starting verse 5. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this that we've done, that we've let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him and took his hundred chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamped at the sea by Pi Haroth in front of Baal Zephron. Now we come to D. The Israelites were afraid and they blamed Moses. The theme is man's a sinner. He needs God and he's helpless to save himself. In Exodus 14.10, when Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Well, even though they had seen all the great and mighty things which the Lord had done there in Egypt, they still did not trust in the Lord. And the theme here is that man must have faith in order to please God and be saved. Moses, however, trusted in the Lord and told the Israelites to believe God. Exodus 14, verse 13. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You have only to be silent. Well, the theme here is that God is loving, merciful, and gracious. Even though the Israelites sinned and didn't trust in God, he was merciful and he still planned to deliver them. I mean, they couldn't deliver themselves. I mean, the sea was in front of them, mountains were all around them, and their enemies were behind them. Only God could save them. We come to eat. God opened the Red Sea. And the theme here is that God is all-powerful. Exodus 14, verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. We come to F. Israel was led by God through the sea. The theme is God is faithful, he never changes. Exodus 14, verse 19. Then the angel of God, who had been leading the people of Israel, he moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The cloud settled between the Egyptian and Israelite camps. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the night. But the Egyptians and Israelites did not approach each other all night. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Well, what we see here is the Lord did not forsake his people. He promised to lead them safely out of Egypt and into the land that he had promised to Abraham. And the Lord led the Israelites into the path which he had created through the Red Sea. The Lord moved the cloud that was leading Israel and placed it between them and the Egyptians. Behind the Egyptians, the cloud was bright and shining like sun. It gave light so the Israelites could see where they were going. Before the Egyptians, however, the cloud was black. There was only darkness in front of them. Nevertheless, the Egyptians continued to follow because the Lord planned to destroy them. Well, let's see how this scene was depicted in the great classic film, The Ten Commandments. Fear not! Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord!
Exodus 14, verse 23. Then the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers, they chased them into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. He twisted their chariot wheels, making the chariots difficult to drive. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites, the Egyptians shouted. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. We come to G, God drowned the Egyptian armies in the sea. The theme is God is holy and righteous, and God is supreme and sovereign. Exodus 14, verse 26. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. As the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the Red Sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. So the Egyptian armies were drowned by God in the sea. I mean, no one can fight against God and succeed. He punishes all those who fight against him. But he's a merciful savior to all those who believe his word and come to him in the way that he says. Exodus 14, verse 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Well, when Israel saw the great things which the Lord did, they believed in him. Now, this story of the Israelites passing through the Red Sea, it's not just a part of history, but it reveals a present-day reality as well. The passing through the Red Sea represents the believer's identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The Apostle Paul says, For I want you all to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all of them passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 4. So Paul is giving the exodus from Egypt a Christological reading. He's making the connection between the exodus from Egypt and salvation in Christ. And notice how Paul says, they were all baptized into Moses. Well, just as the Israelites were baptized into Moses, so too are Christians baptized into Christ. Paul writes to the Romans and he says, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Well, another way of looking at this was that when the Hebrew people, the children of Israel, when they crossed through the Red Sea, and then the Red Sea closed up and came crashing down on all of Pharaoh's soldiers, that effectively cut the Israelites off from ever going back to Egypt. I mean, they were severed. I mean, all their ties with Egypt were severed at that point. They were cut off from their lives as slaves in Egypt. I mean, they couldn't go back, even if they wanted to. And in a similar way, when we're baptized into the Messiah, we are cut off from our old man, from our old nature, from our old life, our old ways. Baptism enables us to be set free from slavery to sin and to walk as new creatures in Christ Jesus. Baptism enables us to be set free from slavery to sin and to walk as new creatures in Christ Jesus. If you haven't been baptized, get baptized as soon as possible. And now we come to H. Israel complained. Exodus 16, verse 1 through 3. Well, even though the Lord had delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians by opening up the Red Sea and leading them safely through, they still had not learned to trust him. They murmured and grumbled and blamed Moses and Aaron. Instead of complaining, they should have trusted in God to give them food. But you see, they couldn't get food anywhere. Moses couldn't provide food for them for like two and a half million people. And there were no supermarkets and there was nothing growing out there. It was a barren desert. So now we come to I, God promised them food. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites complaints. Now tell them, in the evening you will have meat to eat and in the morning you'll have all the bread that you could want. And then you will know that I am the Lord your God. So we come to J, God gave them food. You see, God is faithful and he never changes. And the Lord faithfully provided quail for them in the evening so they'd have meat to eat. And in the morning, he caused this manna to come down from heaven and to land on the ground. It was like a flaky substance that they could gather up and make into bread. God never failed them. God is faithful. And now we come to K. Israel murmured once again. Although the Israelites were thankful for God's provision of food, they soon forgot about his great power and they began to complain all over again. 
Exodus 17, verse 1. At the Lord's command, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of sin and moved from place to place. Eventually, they camped at Rephidim, where there was no water there for the people to drink. So once more, the people complained against Moses. Give us water to drink, they demanded. Well, consider this. How long can a man live without water? Only a few days. The Israelites were afraid they were all going to die there in the desert. I mean, can you imagine the burden that Moses must have been carrying? He had no way of supplying water for all these people, for two and a half million people and all their animals. Only God could help them. L, God told Moses what to do. God didn't let the Israelites die of thirst. He gave them water because he's loving, merciful, and gracious. Moses had to do it God's way. Every time they came to an impossible situation, God told them what to do, exactly what to do. Now we come to M. God provided them with water. Exodus 17, verse 6. I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai. Strike the rock and water will come gushing out. And then the people will be able to drink. So Moses struck the rock as he was told and water gushed out as the elders looked on. Well, in obedience to the Lord, Moses struck the rock. Immediately a great stream of water flowed out that was sufficient for all the Israelites and their animals. Now we come to end, conclusion. The story of God's provision for the Israelites is told many times in the Old Testament and it's referred to in the New Testament. These are historical events. Yes, they're miracles and they're God's miracles. They show us his faithfulness to keep his promises. They show us his great love for his people. They show us his sovereign power over all creation. Well, next time in lesson number 25, we're going to answer the question, is the law of the commandments only for the Jews? Until then, this is Pastor Dale saying, Shalom. Shalom.